Hey there, it's Amanda. I am founder of Food52, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make milk bread. This recipe is based on a Japanese milk bread technique where you combine real milk and flour to make this kind of bechamel-like paste that you mix into the dough, and it creates this super fluffy, light bread that is great for sandwiches, great for toast, delicious all around. So I'm going to get started by combining water and milk. And in this case, I'm using lactose-free milk, which works really well. And it is just regular cow's milk with the lactose removed. And I do that because I am lactose intolerant, but I love milk. I'm going to start it actually kind of high uh, just to get it heated up, but then we'll lower it to, to medium. I've just added some flour, bread flour, and I'm going to whisk it. Just like you, it's, feel, it's very reminiscent of making, of making bechamel. And as it heats, it's going to thicken. And I'm gonna just keep whisking and stirring as it goes. And it's actually going, it's gonna thicken and then it's going to actually start, after a bit, start loosening and pulling away from the pan. And that's when you know it's ready. The recipe says it takes about 10 minutes, but I have found that it's really dependent on the pan you use, the strength of your stove, how much you whisk. It's now starting to take on, ooh, it's starting to bubble around the sides. And ooh, it's kind of like a thick puree. And it's starting to bubble and get fluffy. <sighs> I'm tired. Just if it starts getting excited and like, like it's gonna jump out of the pan, just turn down your heat. All right, this is looking good. Nice and thick, but still pourable. And this is the kind of thing like a pudding that will get a skin on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour, measure out a half cup, and then we're gonna cover it uh, until we need it. As you can see here, there's probably about uh, another half cup. So you can, you can save it and you know use it to make another loaf. You could also just double the recipe if you'd like. And you know what, I have to tell you, once you taste this, you're gonna want another loaf um, shortly after because it's gonna go really quickly. All right, so I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and then you wanna let this cool, you know, it doesn't, I would say just to, till about room temperature. You just don't want it to be so hot that it kills the yeast that you're adding to the bread dough. To make the dough, we're gonna add bread flour to the bowl of a mixer that's fitted with a dough hook. Of course, you can do this by hand, but if you got one of these, it's a lot easier. And then we're gonna add some sugar. Milk bread always has a bit of sweetness to it. And there's some yeast, a nice bit of salt. What we wanna do is just give that a quick stir. All right, so you just give it a quick stir so that yeast and the sugar and the salt and everything is um, evenly dispersed. And then we're going to be adding the liquid ingredients, which include a whole egg and milk, here we go, and then honey, again, a little bit more sweetness, and the tangzang, which is what we just made. So scrape that out, make sure you get every last bit. All right, so then we're going to get the dough to form over a couple of minutes. So start, start on low. I find it really hard to be patient. It pulls in the dry ingredients very slowly from the edges, but just have faith, it will happen. The, now you can see the dough is really starting to form into a ball, which is great. It's getting it's a little shaggy, it's kind of fun. I, I love the transformation of bread dough. This is what is so great about uh, milk bread, which is that the milk and the ta uh, tangzong, they create a super fluffy texture in the bread as it rises. So I've just turned off the mixer. When I'm making bread, I actually like in between kneadings to give it a few minutes uh, to rest. All right, so we let this sit for a couple minutes and now we're gonna add the butter. I like just kind of making sure it gets dispersed around. And we're gonna mix this in and then we're gonna knead it for another 10 to 12 minutes. And it's gonna get super soft and supple. All right, I'm gonna shut it off now. It's been kneading for about 10 minutes. 
and we're gonna scrape it out and shape it into a ball so that it can go through its first rise. So you want a lightly floured uh, surface and a bowl that will that's bigger than the dough because of course the dough is gonna rise and double in the bowl. And just some softened butter, which you want to smash around the bowl. And this just um, helps the dough so that when it's rising, it doesn't face any resistance from sticking to the bowl itself. It just kind of glides up the sides. Okay, so now we're gonna shape the dough. Come on, dough. <laughs> you can see it's a really nice, smooth, silky dough. I'm just gonna put a little bit, sprinkle a little more flour on top, and then you just want to form it into a loose ball. Oh, this is so nice. Plop it into your bowl and we're going to um, cover it with a dish towel and let it uh, double in size. And that'll take about an hour. Now we're moving on to the next fun part. You can see the dough has doubled and I'm going to punch it down. And then you just fold in the four sides. Oh my gosh, this is so, this is like a big marshmallow. And pull it out. Again, lightly floured surface. Plop down your dough. Don't be shy. And now we're gonna cut it into four pieces. Now, if you worked in a bakery, you'd probably weigh each of these to make sure that they were equally weighted, but this is a home recipe, so we're just gonna wing it. And then I'm gonna take each piece and form it into a little ball. I like to kind of give, give it a little pat, like pat down as I go and sort of fold in all the edges. So you're kind of like tucking in the, it's like kind of making a bed, you know, you're sort of tucking in the loose ends of the sheet. Just give it a little dusting of flour and reuse your dishcloth. And we're gonna let them sit there for about 15 minutes until they get kind of nice and puffy. Okay. Ooh, they look nice and puffy and relaxed. And then I've got a buttered loaf pan. And what I'm gonna do with each ball is turn it over and then just pat it out so that it's a little bit like a long oval, about four inches wide. Okay, and then start at one end and just roll with your hands like that. It's kind of like making a little burrito. And then we're gonna put them seam side down in the buttered loaf pan. You know, I almost became a bread baker. So, nestle that in. Here we go, we've got our milk bread. Looks like four logs. And we are gonna cover it again <laughs> with the dish towel and let it rise one last time before it goes into the oven. Ooh, look at that. This is perfect. But before it goes in the oven, you wanna give it a nice glaze of whole real milk. And I would recommend whole milk because that has the most fat content and you want the fat content from milk to um, help with the browning and give it this nice shiny glaze. And we've got our oven heated to 350. It takes about, I wanna say 40 minutes, but with any kind of baked good, you always wanna just keep an eye on it. So I would check it after 20 and then it's done when you can tap on it and it sounds hollow. Here we go. Here is this beauty right out of the oven. It is, as you can see, a beautiful hazelnut golden brown. And we're just gonna let it cool for a minute and then we're gonna flip it out. I have a little taste, but of course I think it's always better with a little bit of butter on top. This actually takes me back to when I was little and we would go visit my great grandparents and I would sit under their kitchen table with bread and butter. And it was actually a milk bread that my mom would make. <laughs> mm. This is so delicious. The milk gives it not only like a creamy flavor, but it also, because it's, it's such a nice moist dough, it almost has a creamy texture too. I hope you'll give this milk bread a try. It's super easy, even if you're not an experienced baker. So go for it.